Welcome to our city commission meeting. We're going to open with a prayer from Reverend Ryan Adams, led, and then have the pledge led by Jared Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, may we as your servants be instruments of peace. O oh Lord, where there is hatred, may we bring love. Where there is offense, may we bring pardon. Where there is discord, may we bring union. Where there is error, may we bring truth. O oh Lord, may we seek to console more than to be consoled. For it is understanding that comes from you, as does love, grace, and mercy. Amen. Amen. Roll, please. Mayor Bernicke. Here. Commissioner Halligas. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Rader. Here. Commissioner Street. Here. Mayor, you have quorum. Okay, we've got the minutes from the April 12th. Everyone had a chance to read those. Additions or deletions. Otherwise, uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented from April 12th. <clears throat> yes, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes from City Commission meeting. April 12, 2022. Second the motion, Mayor. Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Any additions or deletions to the? Yes, we would ask that 5-E and 5-F be postponed to the next meeting. Okay, do hear a motion to postpone 5-E and F till the next meeting? So approved, Mayor. I'll second the motion. Is there a particular reason why can I ask? Or? We're going to leave it open for applicants. Okay. okay. Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Can I ask one other? Oh, excuse me, Mayor. I'd like to ask a question while we're talking about changes, as you mentioned. And please forgive me because I <clears throat> have been out of pocket with a throat this week. <laughs> Uh, on item 7C, we've only had, a, we're not ready for a final reading, are we? Okay, I'll, I'll talk Would about you, Okay, we'll make it there. Okay, but thank it's, you. It's, it's legally ready, but you may want to consider options. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Greg. You have your family come up here, please. Family. <laughs> Doreen Gelder began her career with the City of Panama City on April 30th. 2002 as an accounts payable clerk. She was promoted to accountant in October of 2014. Doreen's years of experience and knowledge of the accounting system made her an excellent candidate to help with the Hurricane Michael recovery. She moved to the city clerk's office as a public assistance grant coordinator in February of 2019. Her key focus was technical assistance to FEMA and state grants during the hurricane recovery. In September of 2021, Doreen was promoted to Deputy City Clerk and enjoys her new position supporting the City Clerk, City Commission, and being a main point of contact for the public. Today, we would like to thank Doreen and honor her with this plaque 
for service to the Panama City community for 20 years. Doreen, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Yes, sir. Mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well being. All Americans face challenges in life that can impact their mental health. Prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions. There are practical tools that all people can use to improve their mental health and increase resiliency. Mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation. With effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full, productive lives. Each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, organization, and citizen share the burden of mental health problems and has a responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention and treatment. Now, therefore, I, Greg Rudnicki, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Panama City, do hereby proclaim May 2022 as Mental Health Month throughout the city of Panama City and to commit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health the steps of our citizens can take to protect their mental health and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental health conditions. Amen. Congratulations. That's important. Yeah. So important. Chief, can you bring up your group? International Firefighters Day was established in 1999 to remember those firefighters worldwide lost in the line of duty protecting the safety of us all. Firefighters dedicate their lives to the protection of life and property. Their dedication comes in many forms, whether volunteered or as a professional. In all cases, they risk the ultimate sacrifice for the protection of their community. The personnel of the Panama City Fire and Rescue Department follow a long line of tradition and honor while showing bravery and compassion in carrying out this critical public safety mission and risk injury and exposure to severe hazards when protecting our citizens and their property from harm's way. And furthermore, not hesitation to risk their own lives when called upon to save the lives of others. At a moment's notice, firefighters are quick to respond to uncertain situations 
to mitigate danger and combat the threat of destruction, fire in order to protect individuals, families, and the economic being of our community. The personnel of the Panama City Fire and Rescue Department are vital members of our community with their commitment to continue training, skill enhancement, and numerous community outreach initiatives that work with the citizenry to achieve a safe environment in which to live, work, and play. Now, therefore, I, Greg Bernicki, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as the Mayor of the City of Panama City, do hereby proclaim May 4th, 2022, as International Firefighters Day throughout the City of Panama City, and commend the firefighters of Panama City and those in surrounding communities who, through courageous deeds, have lost their lives or have become disabled in the performance of duty. Thank you, gentlemen. your name? What's your name? <laughs> the future of travel will be a consistent driver of Florida and Panama City's economy and workforce. A robust, a robust travel industry provides significant economic benefits for the nation, generating more than $2.6 trillion in economic output prior to the pandemic with $1.2 trillion spent directly by travelers in the U.S. Travel has been the foundation of a healthy workforce, serving as one of the largest private sector employers in the United States, supporting 17 million jobs prior to the pandemic, and promoting America as a premier destination for global travelers is more important than ever. The future of travel is connecting the U.S. with the global community and safely and securing welcoming international travelers to our community. Leisure travel, while accounts for more than three quarters of all trips taken in the United States, as well as in Panama City, spurs countless benefits to travelers' creativity, cultural awareness, education, happiness, productivity, relationships, and wellness. Now, therefore, I, Greg Bertnicki, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as the Mayor of the City of Panama City, do hereby proclaim May 1st through the 7th, 2022, as National Travel and Tourism Week throughout the city of Panama City and call upon our citizens to join in this special observance by enjoying all of the special events and sites that draw others to our community. Congratulations. Yeah. This is Jennifer Vigil. Jennifer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Community announcements. Youth tennis returned to Oakland Terrace April 7th as close to 30 children of all skill levels took to the courts for fitness and fun. Our youth tennis camp takes place Thursdays through May 19th from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. and is open to all youth ages 7 to 13. The crew of St. Andrews and the City of Panama City hosted their annual Easter egg hunt 
out at Oakland Terrace Park April 16th. Both kids and adults enjoyed games, face painting, arts and crafts, and, the course, and of course, hunting for eggs. Calling all teens, Teen Tuesday, Paint Night returns tonight at Panama City Center for the Arts. Join us on the last Tuesday of each month to create step-by-step -step canvases co-hosted by Palmetto Paint PC. Admission is free. The fun begins at 6. Parents, you are encouraged to participate with your child. Join us on the 5th of May for Family Night, Cinco de Mayo, Celebration of Oakland Terrace Park from 4 to 7. Enjoy the festive sounds of an authentic mariachi band, chips and salsa, a hot pepper eating contest, and more. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Panama City is teaming up with Legacy Arborist Services to host a free tree care workshop and giveaway on National Arbor Day, April 29th, from 9 a.m. to noon out at Oakland Terrace Clubhouse. This free three-hour tree care workshop covers a wide range of topics from protecting tree roots to tree planting and tree pruning. In exchange for your attendance in this relevant and important informative workshop, each participant will receive a free seven-gallon winged elm tree. You must register through the Quality of Life Department for this event. May is known nationally as Mental Health Awareness Month. Come out to Daffin Park May 21st for a family-friendly gathering of resources supporting those affected by substance use and mental health challenges. This event runs from 1 to 4 p.m. and is brought to you by folks over at Bay of Hope. Also on May 21st, join us at Cargrave Park located at Collegiate Drive in Panama City for live music, food, trucks and fun at the inaugural Test Strong Food Truck Festival. <laughs> there is no entry fee for this event. 10% of all vendor proceeds go to benefit Mothers Against Drunk Driving of Northwest Florida. Welcome to the Year of the Tiger. Dadra, Panhandle, and the City of Panama City are excited to announce the inaugural Asian American Pacific Islander Festival. Discover Asia, downtown at McKenzie Park, May 21st from 3 to 8 p.m. Explore Asian and Pacific Islander culture with an evening filled with arts and crafts, music and dance, plants and exotic cuisine. This fun-filled virtual day trip to the Orient is something the whole family is sure to love. I feel like I need a commercial break. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, we'll have audience participation, and we have Michelle Clay lined up to speak. Good morning, Michelle Clay, 803 East 10th Street. So first, kind of piggybacking off what the mayor said about a commercial break, it's been super exciting to see all the events happening here in Bay County. I mean, on May 21st, there's literally like three, four events happening at one time. So that's kudos to the city, quality of life, and just all the great work that you guys are doing to keep the quality of life here in Panama City moving and excited. <clears throat> I come before the podium today to d address something that I came to the podium exactly this time last year, which is the Glenwood Community Center and how previous to the storm, there was a senior gathering there. Um, while we currently meet at the Oakland Terrace Park, um, many have stated that they would love to have the option to also be able to have a senior living program at the Glenwood Community Center as well. Um, when I brought this before the city last year, it was told by um, CRA Director Mike Johnson that they would be in the works and that hopefully in a few months it would be up and running. And again, here we are a year later and it hasn't come up and running yet. And so I just want to bring it before the council again that that would be a great location to have activities, have the seniors be able to come out and mingle and just get out and enjoy the festivities and learn more about what's going on in the community. Um, that's all I have today and you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Nevin? <clears throat> Thank you. First item <clears throat> I have commissioners is... Uh, oh. Oh, 
Oh, you didn't sign up. I didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, William Swift, um, 1505 Dunnett Court, Lynn Haven, Florida, chairman of the Glenwood Working Partnership. All right. Um, uh, I moved to uh, Lynn Haven in, in 2008. Um, during the course of, of uh, my, early, my early days, it came up that the, um, that the um, only school that was available to blacks in this community was about to be dismantled and torn down. Well, the city took it over and put it into the CRA. Mm -hmm. uh, the CRA in 1992, I understand, was, was uh, uh, incorporated to handle issues related to Glenwood and related to the downtown North CRA. Well, I moved here in 2008. We started working as the, with the uh, Glenwood Working Partnership. The Glenwood Working Partnership was incorporated as an advisory committee to the CRA. Okay, I'm looking at, I, I, I passed out a, a, um, a package there which has my application to replace the CRA Downtown North um, uh, Program Manager. Um, I've been working for, since 2008, to upgrade the uh, Glenwood community, I've been through I've been through this for for years and years. I've had a very tumultuous relationship. The uh, the ad advertisement for filling up this job is uh, I call it a farce because there's no one in who uh, worked in the CRA that could fill this. There's nobody, uh, uh, Mike Johnson couldn't fill this. Tony Champlain definitely could not fill, fulfill this. So I'm saying that there, there's, uh, uh, you know, we need to get serious about doing some improvement in the downtown North CRA. And my understanding that it's going to expire 1992 and 93 if it hasn't been reauthorized. So uh, there isn't much time left to get things done in the downtown North CRA. Devin? Thank you. <clears throat> First item is the recommendation to approve a settlement agreement with three um, defendants that were in the opioid uh, litigation. It involves CVS Health Corp, Teva, and Allergan Pharmaceutical Companies. Uh, these are recommended <clears throat> by your special counsel, Cliff Higby. The amounts are there, and so the request is to approve these settlement agreements as being consistent with what you had approved as a form agreement months ago that also ratify the execution of, I think, three other prior settlement agreements that the mayor has signed. These will continue to come in. Uh, litigation is ongoing, and as they come in, we're asked to sign, and we'd appreciate your approval. Your motion on 7A? Yes, Mayor, I'd like to move approval of item 7A. Second a motion, Mayor. <coughs> Discussion? <coughs> Call the roll. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. The next items, Mayor, are 7B and 7C, and I'll talk about both of them um, at the same time with your permission. The first one is, it's an ordinance 3060 for emergency declarations, nuisances, and pop-up events. This is a first reading, so this is not necessarily a public hearing, but if the commission wishes to proceed, this would go to the next meeting for the public hearing and adoption. 7C is a final, uh, this is a public hearing, and it would be the final reading and could be adopted, but it may be that after you deliberate over 7B, 
7C may not be necessary and you may uh, consider a motion to withdraw action at this time on the late night ordinance. So let me go back to 7B. Uh, the ordinance that we have as a first reading is patterned after Florida law and the what Panama City Beach has done. This is the result of meetings that the mayor and the city manager had with different club owners, with meetings with the police department, with um, uh, our, our office, city attorney's office, have worked with Panama City Beach's office as far as understanding <clears throat> what they did. And there are three things <clears throat> primarily in this uh, ordinance. But it allows for a more tailored declaration of emergency. So, and it uh, vests authority to the mayor or city manager to declare an emergency and actually shut down a business if the circumstances are appropriate. So it's more tailored to a particular business and it's not a citywide type emergency declaration. It also uh, it picks up a provision that Panama City Beach had and one that we had included in the late night hours ordinance that says that uh, consumption of alcohol in commercial parking places um, is not allowed. And that's been a problem at the beach where there are congreg congregations uh, indulging in vacant parking lots. So that provision was in the late night hours, thinking that you <coughs> didn't know where late night hours was going, but all agreed that that would be very good to have, so I, we have placed it in, in for the first reading of this ordinance. The third thing that's also addressed has to do with pop-up events. These are really special events without permits that pop up, and Panama City Beach had an issue with these, and this is tailored after Panama City Beaches. One issue that has come up has to do, or questions, has to do with the declaration of emergency. What is in this ordinance is, is no different than what is already present in uh, Florida law. Uh, in statute um, 823.05, it says that it lists a variety of things that are declared nuisances. And if two of these nuisance events occur within a six month period, then the city or county would have the authority to abate the nuisance by taking action against the, uh, the owners. And um, that is already, now the, the primary difference between our ordinance and Florida law is that under the statute, you would go to court and actually seek to abate the nuisance. We have a special magistrate provision. So we have in our ordinance that um, we actually go to our special magistrate for a determination that this is a public nuisance that must be abated. And, it, it, um, and it's not, it, a nuisance isn't occurred because you make a call for help to the police department. A nuisance occurs when the owner or the, or the uh, manager or, or whatever in the business is a part of the problem and uh, knowingly allows criminal activity to go on. And so it's not calls for help that create a nuisance, it's the actual engagement in the nuisance. So that's for your consideration today. Uh, be happy to answer any questions on it. I know that uh, uh, Chief Smith is here to answer questions and uh, that is, so the first item is just, if you have any questions on the first reading, of ordinance 3060, and then depending on that go, goes, you can consider adopting, not adopting, or simply making a motion to withdraw at this time the late night ordinance, because it may be that 3060 <coughs> takes care of the problem, and the late night ordinance is more tailored to the hours of two to four. We had a, a meeting with uh, the chief and several owners we're fortunate because we have so few of these businesses that are open during that time that we were able to meet with more than a majority mm -hmm. uh, of, the, uh, of the people that own them. And it was ironic because we had some kind of silliness. I know the, the one gentleman from uh, uh, the pizza place, <laughs> you know, like they, he didn't fit into that mold. Mm 
you know, and, and some of these smaller places. And so we were able to get everyone's perspective. And I think uh, by recrafting the, the new ordinance, we, we handle and address the issue much better than the one that we talked about last time. And it, and it was just, you know, applying some common sense, being able to, to talk to owners. Um, I wasn't surprised about the level of responsibility that everyone was taking for taking care of their business. And I have the confidence that, that every one of those people is, uh, uh, you know, they dealt with that challenge and they were just as surprised as we were uh, to, to, uh, to have to uh, deal with what they dealt with. But I think this first one that we've got now will give us the authority to be able to have a level of safety that, that we need uh, to be able to protect our citizens and, and make sure that we're still business friendly, but um, you gotta be prepared. And, um, so Greg, thank you for meeting with all of them. I knew that. Okay, so the next one, the this because I was reading over that and I was like, there are no changes. Like, like no one heard anything we said. I was like, this is terrible. So this one that we're talking about, if if we wanted can the original one, we could do that. This is after talking to the business owners, making those changes, not making any knee jerk reactions. It looks like an excellent. I mean, you did a really good job. You did. Oh, never. And did. that's exactly why I said I was not comfortable with the first time, the, the oh, first yeah. go round. Yeah. And you know, things have to be tweaked, and you have to communicate. That was tremendously tweaked, though. So. Yes. <laughs> yep. So. I, Other I, comments? I, I think this. I think the new one is much, much better than what we were pursuing, and I think this gives the chief uh, the tools that he needs to be able to address. But he can do it in a manner that doesn't go overarching across the city. And so, um, I, you know, I concur. I, Nevin, I thank you for bringing the to attention that a call for help is not a nuisance. Yes. So that's that's a very important component. Um, and, and my understanding is this can only last for 72 hours anyway. So that's the maximum that this could be exercised on any given location or business unless the commission comes back and we choose to extend it. Correct. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, it, is this, are we talking about a permanent year round, not just in this March and April? Yeah, the, without it, could not anticipate Sorry. where the city commission was heading, but this really does not deal with after hours from two to four. Nothing to do with the Marshall first Marshall. ordinance dealt with after hours. It, it became evident to those that went to the meeting that uh, after hours wasn't really the issue. The issue were other things. Mm -hmm. So that's why now the, the after hours ordinance can be taken up again at a later time if this doesn't solve the problem. Right. Well, yes, Mr. Mayor, like I was understanding there was a possibility of it may come here in Panama City area and by coming out and working together it, it let you know it could happen to you whether it was ruled out or what ruled in but I think the chief is doing an outstanding job and they're, they're combating this and I see we are coming together more to operate this is not just one city's activity this is the whole county coming together, yes. and, I, and I thank them. I agree. Is this the same thing that the county has adopted? It is very similar to Panama City Beach. Bay Beach. County has not adopted that uh, exactly what the beach has. This is very, very close yeah. to Panama City Beach. All right, Devin. Okay, the first reading okay. of Ordinance 3060. <clears throat> An ordinance of the City of Panama City, Florida, amending the City's Code of Ordinances to establish a new Chapter 25 relating to emergency declarations, providing definitions, providing for declarations of emergency, authorizing measures to address the emergency, providing for the filing, publication, duration, and scope of emergency orders, providing for advanced emergency declaration measures, providing penalties and enforcement, amending chapter three of the city's code to include definitions, providing for regulation in commercial parking lots, amending chapter 12 of the city's code to include a nuisance definition, amending chapter 12 to add a new section addressing spontaneous unpermitted assemblies, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict, providing for codification, providing for severability, 
and providing an effect, immediately effective date. The next item to discuss is um, action on uh, the late night ordinance 3059. If they're based upon your prior discussion, it may be appropriate for a motion to withdraw this ordinance for consideration at this time, and then it's off the table, and, um, and it can be resurrected if necessary, or if not necessary, then won't be talked about later. I'd motion like to, to withdraw 7C. I'd like to move a motion to withdraw 7C. And I will second that motion. Any other discussion? We'll call the roll. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Member Nicky? Yes. Motion to withdraw passes 5-0. Come on up, you bet. This is my first meeting in five years, and Good I, I kind of feel Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you guys too. I, I kind of feel so strongly about it that that I wanted to show up, and um, I'm glad to see that everybody's working together. You, you'll remember seven or eight years ago this topic came up, yeah. and we voted. We had the same discussions, and we voted um, not to extend it, and, and kind of followed this. And we really didn't have problems in that vein, but we got a new problem. Um, I, in preparation for the meeting, I watched the video. Um, it's shocking. It is really shocking. Um, and, and I don't know where the chief is at. He's back. There. there he is. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay. In an environment that we live in, for them to take something that was a grenade where the pin was pulled and already thrown and defuse that situation, mm -hmm. which could have really quickly turned into something very bad because there's forces out there that are waiting to, to go after every mun municipality and every police officer to vilify them and look for excuses. So one thing I would suggest you consider that so this issue is gone, that, that we looked at working with the police department to institute a, and they're probably already working this, but I'd like to see it financed in a true plan for rapid response, something akin to active shooter, response, hurricane response. Um, it's, it's great, you know, uh, Tommy Ford and, and the chief on the beach and everybody are working together. It's this intelligence gathering they're doing is at the heart of this um, and getting in front of it. But um, it's gonna happen to us again. And it's really not related to us and it's not related to spring break. It's related to where we are politically and socially right now. And yeah. we've gotta be ready for it because I, I don't want to, of course, see our officers hurt, but I also don't want to see their careers ruined because they tighten handcuffs a little tight. And the carpetbaggers' attorneys are waiting out of town mm -hmm. to flow in here and look for these excuses to try to bankrupt our city and ruin our police force, all right? We see it. It's, it's amazing. I'm extremely proud of these guys, and these ladies and, and, and men that, um, they how they diffuse this situation and they've done things that that chicago and new york and los angeles haven't been able to do we've seen it over the past year so uh, let's get ready for it because yeah. it's going to happen again all right thank you thank you john yes. and for the record that's john katie <laughs> if you need his address or anything <laughs> <laughs> all right unfinished business 8A, we have final reading of Ordinance 3053.1, Voluntary Annexation of 0.499 Acres of Property Located at 2908 Tupelo Drive. Background information, the applicant has requested annexation into the city in order to utilize city services. This item was reviewed by the Planning Board on March 14, 2022. The Planning Board recommended approval unanimously and the staff recommendation is to conduct the final reading of annexation. Okay, your motion. I would like to move approval. Second. And I would like second, to say something. Second a motion, Mayor. Okay, Unless say something. Hmm? Okay, this kind of borders Josh, uh, Commissioner Streets in my, our area, very close to it, but it's in Ward 3. And I've had some emails from uh, constituents, uh, good people, that live, you know, within a mile of there or so, or maybe closer, I don't know, in Sweet Bay area. And I want to assure them, see, this is not a development order. This is an annexation. That's all this is. So people are, you know, they, it's the fear of the unknown. We've always seen that. 
they get a little scared. And so I want to go on record as saying, you know, when it comes time for a development order, we'll look at it strongly, but there's only a half an acre. And there's really not much you can do on half an acre. Well, I think they were fearful of apartments or something of that nature. And I'm just being as open as I can be and transparent with the five or six emails that I received. So I want my constituents to understand that I- You sure this is the one you're talking about? Because they're just getting- yeah, No. Nope. This is- This, this is, is it. Go and talk. Yes, a residential, it is. Residential, this 0.499 acres. I understand there may be another one coming down the pipe that's 15 acres for Tupelo. Okay. That you but might be referring was to. That a, that's not on today. It's not on today. Well, then forgive I was me. About to say this is our well, I'm going to yeah, say they, they yeah. just want to get water. They just, they're just starting the way ahead of these people. Are. Yeah. There you go, Raider. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, you can laugh. It's all right. Is a public hearing. Anyone like to address us on this issue? Yeah, gosh. Okay. Seeing no one, call the roll. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Raider? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Street? <laughs> yes. Mayor Vernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. We'd have some comedy. Com the commission <laughs> has adopted ordinance number 3053.1, an ordinance of the city approving the voluntary annexation of 0.499 acres of unincorporated property located at 2908 Tupelo Drive, Bay County, Florida, into the city as further defined here and after amending the wards and boundaries of the city to include said land and providing for an effective date. Final reading of Ordinance 3053.2, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect the land use designation of residential for the property located at 290A Tupelo Drive. Background information is the same information as previously stated in annexation agenda request, and staff recommends approval of the final reading of the ordinance. Your motion on 3053.2. I'll make a motion. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Continue the public hearing. Seeing no one. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rayner? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Commission has adopted Ordinance 3053.2 and ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of residential for a parcel of property located at 2908 Tupelo Drive, Panama City, Florida, providing for repealer severability and an effective date. Item 8C is final reading of ordinance 3053.3, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect the zoning designation of residential one R1 for the property located at 2908 Tupelo Drive. The background information is same information as previously stated in the annexation agenda request, and staff recommendation is to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. Your motion on 3053.3. Move approval. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion? Call the roll. Still having a public hearing. Everyone would like to address this. Go ahead. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted Ordinance 3053.3, an ordinance zoning a parcel of property located at 2908 Tupelo Drive, Panama City, Florida, having approximately 0.499 acres, R1, providing for severability and an effective date. Item 8D is final reading of ordinance 3054.1, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect the land use designation of mixed use for the property located at 1817 Beck Avenue. For background information, the applicant has requested a land use and zoning change to develop townhomes, two units on the subject property. The item was reviewed by the planning board on March 14th, 2022. The planning board recommended approval unanimously and staff recommendation is to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. This is a public hearing. Anyone like to address us on this issue? <laughs> Seeing no one, here mo motion on ordinance 3054.1. I'll make a motion to approve. Here's second. I'll second that. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has approved ordinance number 
an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of mixed use for parcels of property located at 1817 Beck Avenue, Panama City, Florida, providing for a repealer, severability, and effective date. Item 8E is final reading of Ordinance 3054.2, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect the zoning designation of mixed use 3, MU3, for the property located at 1817 Beck Avenue. Background information is the same as previously stated in the future land use amendment agenda request, and staff recommendation is to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. Continuing the public hearing, I would like to address this on the zoning portion of this issue. Beck Avenue. Uh, my question is not so much on the zoning, but what happened to the request to uh, amend the uh, setback requirements for this lot? Was that posted at the same time? Was that granted? I have no idea. I don't know. Was, for Juwan. Yeah. was that on the Juwan, first reading? Juwan, our oh, senior planner. Second. So it's still pending? Oh, so hold, hold on. on. We're going to find Juwan's out. Gonna hold on. She's coming up here. We're going to find out. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Jawan Haley, uh, Development Services staff. So the um, the citizen is referring to the variance request um, that did that was also on this property. Variance requests in the City of Panama City go to the Planning Board. They not go, they do not go before the City Commission, but the Planning Board did approve the variance request. So that that has already been approved by the Planning Board. Okay. All right. Well, that would explain why yeah. we didn't. Yeah. Know. So where may I comment? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it seems to me to be to uh, to allow uh, um, residences or really anything being built on this corner. Why, uh, if you've relaxed the side, the side yard setback because it's corner property, makes that all along 19th Avenue, whatever happens here is completely inconsistent with the entire uh, 19th Avenue going west. The setback is going to be way out in front. There might be a possibility that it obstructs uh, a, a driver's view. It can't, I mean, I, I appreciate the need for housing, but I can't understand how both the relaxing the side yard setback and allowing building, it, it seems to me to be mutually exclusive. Okay, did you, did you go to the planning board when, I when did, they, did you did? the first reading, and I said the same thing. In addition, I said that there's no sidewalk. So, so if you relax the side yard setback on 19th and allow someone to build closer, there is no sidewalk. There's sidewalk all the way west on 19th. And it seemed to me that in, in uh, response, or, or if, you, if you do relax the side yard setback, you should at least require that the builder or the owner of the property put the, the sidewalk. So you are coming up to a corner, you have a little thing there with a handicap ramp, mm -hmm. goes nowhere. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense if you go out and look at it. But. Thank you. So I had the same concern as Pete did, and uh, so I reached out to the property owner and just said, hey, like, how, how close are really the buildings coming to the road? And so there will be enough room still to put a sidewalk. They're not going right directly to the road. I think the other important thing to kind of in, in address in this is with our new zoning changes um, and what we're moving towards with Dover Cole neighborhood plans, this is what we're trying to encourage is for more of the buildings to come closer to the roadway and parking to move further away from the roadway. So um, it is a, something we're gonna have to manage, but Joanne, if you've got more information that you wanna share, uh, I just, that was what the property owner told me and so I assume that's what you guys looked at and saw there was still room for a sidewalk, so. Okay. All right. Um, motion. Your motion on uh, the zoning for? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. And thank you, Pete, for coming and keeping that on top of mind, because we do need more sidewalks in this community. <laughs> A lot more. Yeah. Commission is adopted. Ordinance 3054.2. An ordinance zoning parcels of property located at 1817 Beck Avenue, Panama City, Florida, having approximately 0.131 acres, mixed use three, providing for severability and effective date. 
Item 8F is final reading of Ordinance 3055.1, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect the land use designation of mixed use for the property located at 403 and 405 East 4th Street. For background information, the applicant has requested a land use and zoning change to develop mixed use three MU three units. This item was reviewed by the planning board on March 14, 2022. The planning board recommended denial unanimously. Department head recommendation is to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. This is a public hearing. Anyone like to address us on this issue? Yeah. Yeah, we got somebody coming. Mm -hmm. Waylon Patterson. I live at 450 Massalina Drive. Um, I originally received the letter saying you're 300 feet from this property. Uh, so I went to the uh, uh, planning commission meeting and I'm here before you today. My family chose to live in the Cope subdivision of Panama City because of the peacefulness of this single family residential area. Adjusting the zoning from single family residential to multi-use is counter to the current tranquility associated with the Cove and will result in an increase in traffic, noise, place additional demand on overloaded utilities and will compound scarcity of the off-street parking. The zoning request is for a property that formerly contained a single family residential home, it's R1 zoned, rezoning to allow for multiple residences and or businesses, multi-use, will result in an increased population density while the Cove area already has an overloaded sewage system. Just up the street from the property is the sewage lift station located beside Highway 98, just east of downtown Panama City. It frequently overflows, most, fo mostly following heavy rains. Adjusting this property from a single family home to multiple apartments or businesses will only compound the overtaxed sewage problem. The utility system needs to have an increase in capacity before increasing population density. The following pictures illustrate this issue. This is a picture at Business Highway 98, east of downtown at the head of Massalina Bayou. Sewage coming from the manhole in the street pushed the manhole cover upside down. With the sidewalk blocked by sewage, pedestrians observed sewage flowing from the manhole in the middle of the street eastbound in the right-hand lane. And it was flowing directly into the storm drain which goes directly into um, Massalina Bayou. The second picture um, shows it flowing into the storm drain. They are uh, at uh, the side of uh, Highway 90, Business 98. And the third picture, uh, I went right before the Planning Commission, but I checked it uh, yesterday uh, the manhole beside the street um, has toilet paper and other residual items that I won't mention deposited uh, post sewage overflow events. In the article published 3 November by Panama City Living, Mayor Greg Benicki stated 70% of the people in Bay County are renters, which is opposite of most communities. The point of the post hurricane comment amplifies home ownership is the means to have folks vested in our community. In the same article, Bernicke also stated, we probably Thank lost 25% of our population, meaning many who were not vested in our community, renters, departed Panama City as Thank rental you, rates sir. steeply increased. Allowing this rezoning to add more residential property is counter to having um, folks vested in our community. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. say something before everybody comes up just to make sure that we're all looking at the same thing so they don't feel like they were defending something that may not be there and give him maybe the opportunity to come back up if he needs to I know that's not normal but what we really need to talk about is the R2 because the developer is willing to do R2 um, and so that would be different than a lot of these concerns it doesn't mean it's totally different but it's different and right now they're both zoned r1 it's see i guess somebody illegally put four units at some point of if, as a as you say units if you want to call them but one of those parcels has four one bedroom things and then there was a single family home that was 
torn down. R2 would allow eight units there. And although we can't ever govern, even if somebody builds a single family home there, they could rent it, right? So we can't, we can't govern that, but I will say the developer plans to, to sell the units that he's putting on there. But I wanted y'all to make sure when you come up, let's talk about R2. We all agree that MU2 is, is crazy. So um, if you want to defend that, I think would make, would, would be a better sense. Of, and so I just want you to know you're welcome to come back up. Miss um, Whalen, I mean, when you're. Well, don't they need to be, but he yeah. needs to reapply for R2. Well, that, well, Nevin said that, what'd you say, <coughs> Nevin? <laughs> Which time? No. <laughs> Um, if the uh, applicant wishes to uh, consider uh, applying for R2, then they would, it'd be nice to hear from the applicant to say that. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay, and so let's just go down a trail here. If the applicant were to say that after due consideration that uh, the applicant would like R2 rather than the mixed use, then what the city commission could do, if you agreed with that, uh, have a first reading of residential two, R2, because it's not a land use change, it's just a zoning change. And then you could have an adoption hearing next uh, in two weeks. Bec even though it is a down zoning, I think the most prudent thing to do would be to announce that we are, and hopefully the applicant could say that, announce we're going to R2, that's been the consideration, then if the commissioners likes, would prefer, then we could have a first reading of R2 and the final adoption of public hearing in two weeks. So they don't have to go before the planning commission? Not on a down zoning. Okay. So with that note, let's hear from uh, Jim, the developer, and then I wanna hear from y'all and see. Just but it's, they do not have to go but if the city commission wanted to send them back, that would be more than appropriate. I mean, that's your discretion. Okay. Right. okay. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jim Bichet. If you raise the mic up. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Jim Bichet, and thanks for the opportunity. And uh, of course, I couldn't make it to the plan planning commission myself, but I attended via Zoom. And I came here for the first reading. and. Uh, you know, I am quite aware of the concerns of the neighbors, and I actually welcome him. Uh, I live in a neighborhood myself, and I would not like, you know, my value, my property value to go down in any way, shape, or form. Having said that, uh, when we first applied for, we, we don't own the property. Let me just put that out here, outright. We are prospective buyers, we're still in escrow. As I mentioned to some of those wonderful neighbors uh, last time when I met a couple of them, uh, we can just walk away from the property, no foul, no harm, we'll, give, we'll keep our friendships and, and, and so forth and so on. But I do, this is, uh, this is a beautiful piece of land, beautiful location. I think it's a gateway to the, uh, to the downtown area and we would love to, to make something really beautiful out of it. And uh, if you look up uh, my website, we, ha we had some, I don't know how, how much updated that is, but uh, we, we've done some really nice developments. Most of them, it's either very close to the water or water view, class A buildings, and uh, uh, we were able to, uh, to, to, to have really good reputation, really good re relationships with different cities. Uh, having said that, um, when I applied, I discussed it with Mr. Lane and a few people in the city and in the community, and I thought, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, to build a high rise or a mid rise. We've done mid rises, but this is not the goal here at all. As a matter of fact, from day one, and maybe uh, Joanne can uh, uh, testify to that because she's one of the wonderful people I spoke to uh, a few times, and I took actually her uh, uh, lead on many things. I, I told her we want to, buy, uh, to build single family homes, and those are for sale, not for rent even. Of course, as uh, Ms. Halliga said, uh, we cannot control if someone uh, would rent it after. You know, it says property can do whatever he wants or she wants to do with it. 
But our plan is, uh, was never to build an apartment complex, is never to build, to put any uh, businesses there. We want to uh, just to put maybe, uh, you know, a few stories, um, not that not that high, just you know, maybe 35 feet high, and uh, j just just to conclude, R2 will be fine with me, uh, perfectly great with us. Uh, as a matter of fact, either way, we're not gonna probably uh, surpass that. We were thinking between eight to ten homes, or eight to twelve homes, so uh, seven, eight, okay. nine homes. Thank you, sir. Good. Can I get your address for the record, please? Uh, the, for the address of the property is 403. Your, your address. And 405 uh, East 4th Street. My personal address is, uh, I have two addresses, one in California uh, and one in Texas. Uh, I'll give you the Texas one, 7312 East Loara Road in Spring, Texas. Thank you. Thank You're very welcome. Okay, so just to uh, frame the issue, we now have a request for R2. Obviously, if you have any questions as far as density that's allowed on R2, you could ask that to Jawan, or you could have a first reading and that would come at the uh, final uh, in two weeks. But obviously, a, a, a duplex would be allowed. It's more intense than R1, but it is not MU3. Yeah, and I don't think he wants to do duplexes, but I do, I don't want to waste his time. He's coming from a really far away. I'd rather hear what everybody has to say and it's just kind of, you know, if it, if it doesn't look like it's going to work, then it's, you know, let's, let's Your let comment. him know now. If it does look like it's going to work and, and they want to work with him, maybe then that's different. So we'll, we'll hear the, the audience. Yeah. Go ahead and get the rest of the audience participation. Yeah. <coughs> John Cady, 513 East 4th Street. Um, my residence is two doors down from this property, up the street. It's always been a problem property. Um, it's, it's been in need of code enforcement prior to Michael. The buildings were falling down. No action was taken. That home was rented by two sexual predators. And um, so those buildings being gone have been a, have been a blessing for the neighborhood. And we hope to, to everybody in the neighborhood hope to clean it up. That that neighborhood was platted in 1924. It has always been single family residential. When Sutter's family plotted that, it was anticipated to be that, like the rest of the cove. Um, I don't really see under R2 how you can build more than two units. Maximum density under R2, if I remember, <laughs> it is 10 units per acre, and it's only a quarter acre. It's two lots that are 0.137 acres. So you can't really build more than two units. And when you start to look at the impervious area requirements and the setback requirements, I don't see how to even, how you can even come close to making it work. So that's one issue. Um, when you look at the staff report, when you do these staff reports, you're supposed to consider all the elements of the comp plan, all right? And kind of a little bit of a cop out is to say everything is de minimis. And I'm assuming it's because of the 10 acre requirement for a small plan amendment. Maybe planning can enlighten me, that's why. Um, but a lot of the things for concurrency in the staff report were just simply dismissed as being de minimis. And I can tell you that just from a transportation element standpoint, all right, which we have an intermodal requirement transportation element in our comp plan, one of those is pedestrian traffic. And that's one of the heavily, heaviest pedestrian, pedestrian traffic areas in the city. I know because I look out my window and I see it. Um, the whole pedestrian walkway is in such terrible shape that it's, it's a hazard. Right in front of my house, there's a, there's a three foot deep hole that's been there for three years that the city came in after four requests and put the particle board down. And I heard a noise in the middle of the night and somebody driving a bicycle crashed into that hole, all right, and smacked her head. I heard it from inside the house. So, and it's not unique. Not only that part in front of my house, that whole area. So just under the transportation element, it fails to meet the concurrency requirements, um, the intent of the comp plan. In the staff report, the utilities director says, 
it fails to meet the fire flow for that area. In their, in their own report, there's not enough water pressure to support any more density on that road. And if you want to come over and take a bath in my bathtub sometime, I'll let you see it, okay? So um, if you could just indulge me just for a few more minutes, okay? So um, I think it's appropriate that they want to make this change in their request to go back to the planning board, that staff actually do a staff report that evaluates every element of the comp plan for concern and not say it's just de minimis. Um, um, certainly with sewage, it's, it's a perfect opportunity for city, this is completely aside, to acquire that property in order to use it to protect the bay because that's the downflown area for all the storm water and it's under an old system that flows directly in the Massalina Bayou. Be a great place for a bay saver, a little pocket park, something like that. It is not a place for 10 houses, all right? It, it just, um, there's no appetite for it. So. Um, I think it is only fair to go back before the planning board and staff sharpen their pencil a little bit on their, on their analysis of the, of the property. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Good morning. My name's Gary Boyette. I live at 451 Mathlina Drive. Uh, I've lived there for almost 20 years, and it all comes down to, uh, this is a new thing that you just, we just brought up, but it seems a blind man could see it, that we need to start over on this deal. Uh, I know you've all probably seen the property, and it is definitely not, based on the, uh, the property on the reading before, that, that, that uh, you've said there's not a, even a half acre, and it'd be pointless to build, it's, this is the same thing. It, it's, uh, it's deja vu all over again. But at any rate, um, <clears throat> I want to be clear that I'm not against progress. And uh, with changing this, this small piece of property from R1 single to R2, it, to me, it doesn't make any sense. And this is the most sense I've heard on this particular issue. But uh, the planning board was adamant, unanimous, this, it's not worth it, and they all voted against it. So I'm sure we're gonna revisit this issue, and I think that's the most prudent thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. <laughs> Hello, okay. Melena Weems, 423 Massalina Drive. I'm back again. We are experiencing growth at some shocking rates in Bay County. We um, have entrusted you guys for our future, and we uh, have shown our desires, and we expect you to adhere to them from our, our um, workshops that we've had. We have to consider a worst case scenario when we look at something like this happening. And uh, in the terms of land use for this property, um, this proposed change going from R1 to MU3, which is a huge leap, now you're talking about R2, I'm not prepared to discuss that because it wasn't on our agenda today, and I do think that the applicant should reapply. I think that he should go before the planning board again. Um, the, um, two weeks ago, we talked about it being inappropriate for our community. Um, the most important thing being the fire flow. I don't know how that's gonna change with an R2 density. Um, we have a, prog a process for our progress, or so-called progress. Um, we, I have served myself on numerous committees with the Downtown Improvement Board Architectural Review Committee. I actually headed the Architectural Review Committee, which has builders, architects, engineers on it. And there's a process that goes through, and if, if people were going through that process, we probably wouldn't be here with that application if they um, went through the process that I sat on those boards and we saw people come before us. This would never have gone this far. It would have stopped at that point. The renderings that I was shown a couple of weeks ago never would have gone past the Architectural Review Committee for anyone to consider those buildings on that property in this area. Um, the applicant is not required to tell us his definite plans. And at this point, there's no penalty if they lie to us or if they change their mind. So setting up either R2 or MU3 or whatever, any change in this, we have to look at all the things that can happen on that property once that zoning is changed. Doesn't matter what they tell us they're gonna do, they can change their mind. The cove does not need RU3. 
uh, MU3. I don't know about the R2, um, but at 4th Street and Massalina is not an appropriate place for it. There are some places in the Cove that may be more appropriate, but that certainly is not. Um, the, um, let's see, our, our growth, how we're going to grow and what that looks like is certainly on your shoulders. Um, and we do trust you to do that. We have exchanged emails and phone numbers with um, commissioners and also with the builder, and there's been no communication hmm. beyond that. Um, we have attended our workshops. We have gone to great lengths to show you what our vision is of what our community should be. I think that this application should be denied. I think that it should be a reapplied if he continues, wants to continue with this, and then go before the planning board again and give us an opportunity to speak and prepare ourselves as community folks, as people in your neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your service. Anybody else? Okay. Um, okay, come on, Mr. Henry. Uh, Walter P. Henry, 614 May Perry Avenue. Uh, I'm just listening. Uh, I have one problem I really want to speak of, and I want to nobody answering the people's question. I know that I heard them talk about the lift station sewer, the water, and those things y'all saying y'all going to fix. I don't know what y'all just tell me. That's going to be done. I hope so. Been saying it's going to be fixed. Uh, the station overflowing probably don't have anything to do with the uh, station itself. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it don't. Station shits down. Pumps get old don't pump like they did when they were brand new. Sewer, old, some of it got clogs in it, uh, water's flowing over, over sand. Uh, I mean, the station will take whatever, it don't make no difference in the house that's going to be built. The station is able to take care of that. But uh, in nature, it's some of the problem. Uh, the storm drains, Water getting into the from the storm drain into the city main, but uh, you know it's just thing that folks need to realize. I answer folks, let them know what's happening. Uh, you're going through these planning uh, things and saying that well, let them know that this is not the problem. That building a house, whatever you build, that sewer will that station will take care if it's operating properly. If it's been taken care of properly, it will handle it. It'll take care. Uh, you will have, you will have problems. You will have shut down. Nothing you can do with it. It's shut. Side is shut down. Somebody go get there and get it, get something done. But my problem, what I was like, and I said y'all this just to you before. I don't know why we go through all of this here. I don't know if the government or having having y'all that do this. And showing them the planning maps and all of this stuff. Uh, I think all that ought to be read together. Take some time. Won't, you know, some of this time could be shortened. Uh, I don't know who who do it. I know y'all are authorized to do it. Who authorized you to do it? And the reason that you, you you have to do it. Don't make any sense to me. It might but make sense to you. Do not make any sense to me. Um, I have a governor do it, he do everything else. He's signing everything else. You ought to be able to sign a move in this. It don't make any sense to me. So I just want to follow up. I think that um, I like what Melina said when she was talking about being prepared for R2. So even if I was prepared or we were prepared, she doesn't feel prepared. But I also want Jim to know, we, I appreciate all the effort that he's had, the developer coming in and doing all that. And if he, if it's up to you, if you want to go back to the planning board and go through the process, it doesn't mean it'll be approved, as you know, uh, ultimately when it comes down to it. Um, so, and we've had changes of public works directors, like I don't even know where all this stands right now. So um, I think that's, I think that's a good idea. Um, I actually thought when we, we left two weeks ago that maybe it was okay, like the R2 was okay. Um, and then I went out of town to Nashville all last week and um, 
I only reached out to Melina last night because, of course, I threw away my piece of paper that I wrote all the, <laughs> all the stuff on. So <laughs> apologies for that. So listening to what they're saying, I don't want it to go right. I don't think it's pretty obvious here. I'll move a motion to also deny or accept the denial or whatever it is for the MU3. Um, and then um, I will, it's certainly your prerogative to go back through the planning process with, um, with R2 um, if you want, <laughs> if you actually want to go through that. Like you said, if you walk away, you do whatever. Uh, one thing, the only last thing I'll say is, of course, the fire flow is that, that is something that now that we have a new director as well that we need to, and John, thank you for that input. Um, but if we could, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough one, just I'm going to say with, with the R2, not because of, uh, first of all, I think the size that everybody's talking about, I get missed. Like on the Bay County side, it says what John's saying, but then when you do the actual measurement of it, apparently it's bigger than what we all think. So I don't know what can and what can't and all of that. But Jim, if you, if, if this piece doesn't work for you or it's not your, you know, we, I appreciate your work ethic and what you've done, and I would be glad to have uh, R2 mixed use in downtown if we can if we can get you anywhere over there too, but I just wanna, I mean, it's uh, it sounds like it's gonna be a little bit complicated, and up to you, but I just wanted to be upfront um, about that. So. Jimmy, could I add a couple things to that? Yeah. So uh, there's been a couple things that have been talked about. I just wanna make sure that we're clear on this. Um, so I do enjoy plat work quite a bit. Um, so there are no restrictions on this plat. So should the commission choose to turn it to commercial, that is in full right of, of uh, the commission to do so. And so I do wanna make sure that's understand because sometimes there's plats that, are, that limit only to residential. This is not one. Um, the second thing is on fire flow. This has come up a few times in multiple developments. In the middle of the city, it is my opinion that the developer is not responsible for providing accurate fire flow to a residential property. That is, ours as a public works team and ours as having built out a system that we obviously need to improve and we know that we need to improve not only just our wastewater treatment process but also our fire flow because it's not just this property essentially if we held the line on hey fire flow has got to be at this there would be no more development inside of the city and so and that's not something that's good for the tax base or helping us actually resolve the issue so I just wanted to add those two to try to give some context to why we consider things like this. It's not because we're just, you know, willy nilly just thinking like, hey, let's just go develop, 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 develop. It's because it, it all works together. And some of these things are not, um, are not all on the developer's responsibility. It's on us as a city staff and as a commission to make sure that we're putting in the infrastructure that it takes to to, um, to meet these improvements and future ones as well. So. Okay, there's a motion to deny to hear a second. I'll second her motion. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas. Do I say yes or no? no. Yes. 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 Motion, to deny. <laughs> motion. motion Yes for yes. denial. <laughs> Commissioner Brown. Uh, motion to deny. Commissioner Rader. Yes to deny. Commissioner Street. Yes. Mayor Bernicke. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Motion to deny passes 5-0. And uh, the mayor, the next item, 8G, does not need to be voted on because the land use uh, change was not approved. Brandy? Okay. Item 8H, final reading of ordinance 3056.1, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect the land use designation of mixed use for the property located at East 11th Street, parcel ID number 16454-220-010. Background information, the applicant has requested the land use and zoning change to the mixed use land use category in mixed use two zoning district. This item was reviewed by the planning board on March 14th, 2022. The planning board recommended denial unanimously with one abstention. Um, staff recommendation is to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. This is a public hearing. Anyone like to address us on this issue? Yes. When they say denial with the extent, what was the, what was the rest of the information? <sighs> so someone abstained from voting. Oh, okay. Good morning. My name is Michael Mitchell, 1301 Car Wheel Drive. I'm here today asking that y'all um, reconsider the denial of this here 
that the board um, voted against me. The only reason they voted against me because I wasn't able to attend the meeting. I live six hours away currently with a pregnant wife and three kids and wasn't able to come. But I'm here for the last reading and now. And you have two business owners who voted against me. That's the only reason that I've got denied. And I wasn't there to you know, explain my side of it. The reason that they voted against me is that you have one business owner that just really mad because I don't want to sell the property. You know, he tried to lowball me. The other business owner says that I'm going to be a nuisance or a problem to his business if I change it to residential, which is not true. There's nothing but residential around the whole area. We literally have houses five and ten feet away from the car wash already. Um, behind me is townhouses, to the left, everything is all residential. I have a .3 acre of property that you can't put a business there. The business, if you keep it commercial and put a business, it's gonna be the same problem that the business owner is trying to deny me for. Why would you put another business right beside houses for they can call the police and, and say, oh, it's too much noise going on or whatever his excuse was last time he don't want me to put houses beside his car wash. I, I wanna put either the triplex that Mr. Mike Lane advised me I could put there or subdivide the property and put two family homes there, which would add more housing and it would also increase the value of other homes there. So I don't understand why I'm being denied or why they would want to block this right here when it's clearly helping the community, furthering you know people to you know have housing. And so um, I just ask that y'all really reconsider and um, thank you, appreciate thank it. You. Anyone else? <clears throat> Move it a little slower, can you drive it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name is uh, Bruce Bush. There is a road called Kersey Avenue that's between my lot and his lot. Mm -hmm. I own and operate a real estate business and a contracting company. I bought that business four years ago. I have improved that business. I bought a vacant lot right behind it on Kersey Avenue that previous houses had burnt down. Mm -hmm. So the city told me, which I believed him, his name's Mike, he's no longer there no more. He said it would be a waste of my time and money to try to convert that land. They converted it to commercial property before I bought it. So he said I couldn't go back to mixed use or to townhouses, which was fine with me. I just keep it mowed and keep it clean. Back to property value. Commercial land with house, townhouses through in the middle. If any one of you had an investment over there, we wouldn't want townhouses in the middle of businesses. Businesses is going to make less noise and nuisances I am not the low baller, but I have offered three times to buy this property. It has been listed for 1,539 days. Hmm. If somebody wanted it, they could have done bought it. Me and you all know, if something ain't selling, it ain't because of people, it's because of money. Mm -hmm. So we want our value to stay as good as it can be without devaluing ours where he's thinking he's going to increase our value with his nuisance and his noise, which nobody has accused him of that. <clears throat> nobody said nothing. He was not denied because he wasn't there. He was denied because everybody on that board agreed the same thing. It's been commercial property forever. Why would it go to residential today on a main street with no access to the property? The city owns the ditch, and they won't allow the county to put a driveway there. We just want our value to stay up. Nobody's trying to do nothing wrong. Nobody's trying to say he's doing wrong. We've all offered him money. It's been on the market for four and almost half years. So nobody has blocked him from doing what he could do other than himself. Now, he just said he lives six hours away. He has no interest in that neighborhood. And he's probably gonna sell it to somebody else out of town 
that has no interest in that neighborhood. We all live here. We all care. Sir, can I get your address for the record? Bruce, give us your address. Yeah. Oh, the address in the building. No, no, no you're, 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 you're where you live. Yeah. Oh, I live yeah. 711 yeah. North 11th Street. The building is at 2150 East 11th Street. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, I live here in town. A voter <laughs> that knows other voters. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, yeah, can vote. I would like him to know, of course, he can go back to zoning and change it back to a zoning to put townhouses if he wanted to. Just hope he understands that. Go. Next. No. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce, I did. What I was saying is I hope you know that if you wanted to change the zoning back to do townhouses, you do have the right to go through that process. I have the Just. right, but the point was is he <laughs> said it would probably not happen, but I wasn't talking about it. Just, That's fine. Just question. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, my name is Frederick Mosley. I live at 807 West Street. I, I am the car wash that's on 20, 2250 East 11th Street. Uh, that's a corner of uh, 11th Street and Kersey. That's what he's dealing with. And I would like to voice my opinion about the, the property zoning being changed. Mr. Mitchell has owned this property for many years. He bought it as a commercial, knowingly knowing it's a commercial property. And my concerns is on the change with being mixed zone, um, like a houses and things like that, would probably not work out. I have a car wash, 24 hour car wash. It's gonna be music at times and police may be called, may not be called. I believe they would rather go somewhere else than to come to my business worrying about some kind of noise ordinance. I also believe that it has the potential to bring my value down on my property. Um, some people don't think it's worth much, but it is to me. Um, the board recommended to deny it, and it should be denied. Can I ask you one question, sir? I did not get your the, the address of your car wash. The car wash is 2250 East 11th Street. 2250? Yes. Thank you. I know he said that, but his property that we're talking about has never had an address. Yeah, I know it's just, so a that's why it's just a parcel number. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, you're 2250. Yes. Sir. Thank you. All right. Okay. Raisins. Okay. The applicant can come back up once. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Mitchell again, 1301 Carwell Drive. I just wanted to rebuttal that. I am from here, born and raised, and just because I move out of town with my family and, you know, with a better job and everything doesn't mean I'm, my roots are not from here. My family, everyone is from here. Everything, I, I born and breathe Panama City, Florida. So that there is some other stuff. and. <laughs> Also, I've had this property for 14 years paying taxes, and no one can tell me when it's time for me to do something with my property. I'm the one that's taking the loss here, if anything. My property value right now is $55,000, parcel, just plain property. I'm the one that's gonna take the loss by changing it over from commercial down to mixed use and taking a chance of putting my money on houses that may not sell. Someone may not want, so I'm taking a chance and they're trying to dictate my pockets and tell me that, oh, I'm not from Panama, or I'm not, they're paying taxes, no, that's bogus. I, what they're trying to do is it just really block me from getting in. They've been here getting their money and now they don't want me to get in. Why can't I have a return on my investment? Because in the end, this is about investment, this is about furthering ourselves, our families, we're trying to, you know, benefit our lives, so why are they stopping me? The board only denied me because of their concerns. That's it. And he's saying that his car wash may be a nuisance to the residents who I put houses there for. What about the other residents that's already there? You have houses literally behind you, five feet, 10 feet behind you. You're not worried about them. I've lived, I've lived in that area. 
you know, and I actually lived on Curtis Avenue with my grandmother, two houses down from my property. I know about the area. The car wash is not needed. No one even goes there, no one uses it. <laughs> it's in the way. People rather have houses there, and that, that car wash has been nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble, let's keep it real. I'm from here, and ain't nothing but bad things going on around there. So we want to flip this here, change our community, put housing there, get rid of all the negativity, and move forward. And I appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. It, 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 no, 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 no. We can't. We, we don't. We can't have anybody. Only the applicant can come forward again. All right. So, uh, there. The planning board uh, recommended denial. So. I, I want to hear. Uh, yeah, I, I actually really, they, they kind of piqued my interest last time. And so I actually have used a car wash before. Just saying. I'm, I might be one person that he's making fun of, but I have. I know exactly where this is. And I actually went driving around a little bit. Um, and so without any emotional feelings, I just listening to what y'all have to say. Typically with real estate, it's, it's commercial that hurts residential. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have a bunch of residential and then you allow commercial in there, it can hurt the value of that, depending on what it is. Like if it's Sweet Bay, you know, it's a totally different, well, it's a different thing. No, yeah. It's a quality of life, it's a different thing. So I've, uh, and he does have a point. If he, are to, if he was to move to commercial to residential, he's actually the one losing value in his property right there on 11th Street. The other thing is the, um, the noise. It, that I drove all right, there are houses everywhere. There is residential everywhere in that area and you are backed up next to it, all over the place to it. And that's your prerogative to run your car wash, absolutely. But that, that I'm not saying that we should change this or go against the planning board. I just wanted, these are the things that have been said and so I just wanted to kind of put that, that I don't think that's gonna affect anything else over there. Um, and if you go down 11th Street, there are townhouses right there on 11th Street, um, and there's commercial down 11th Street, especially that corridor going down there. Um, about a driveway, I mean, obviously you can't develop anything that would be residential without a driveway. I mean, we even require that for um, the manufactured homes that we have. So um, I can't imagine that, but that is not what they're asking today. Today is a zoning change. And that would be a land use and how and the development order and how all that goes. And they would have to meet all the code requirements. Um, so, I mean, I, I found it very interesting when I went over there. I really didn't see the substance. I wish we had notes from the planning board. I know somebody's here, but I'm not going to call you up here. Um, and I know there's a real estate agent in here that I'm not going to call up here that I'd like to call up here. But I... I I don't understand why it was changed unless it's just because it sits between two commercial, but the reasoning from the two commercial next to it are actually, I just didn't see to be valid. So I don't know. Mm. I don't know what I feel about it, but I just don't know. Well, <laughs> any other comments? The only thing I saw is mixed use too allows for commercial as well. So, um, so even changing the zoning to mixed use too, regardless of what the applicant uh, you know, chooses to do, Mixed use too allows for residential and commercial, whereas commercial only allows commercial. Right, it's so, a lot more flexible. Yeah, so. So okay. even if he decided not to do residential because we, it wouldn't allow it in our code with the driving with the driveway and all that, then he could still do commercial there. He could still do commercial. I right. don't know. The Just planning board recommended denial. Do I hear a motion to go along with the planning board to deny? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I would like to recommend that we go on with the planning board and proceed to, to go ahead and, and do a vote. Okay. Because now, I'd like to say a little bit more, because whenever we first come up and I heard this last uh, meeting, it came up with what he wanted to do. Did Mr. Gentleman, I think Mr. Mike Mitchell, yeah, what he wanted to do, I understood that. But then, when he come up and got to Mr. Mosley, okay, when he get to Mr. Mosley, he's gonna, defunct Mr. Moses' business in order to give more leeway to what he wants. That's not the correct way that we do things here. Now we have the planning board and the blue come up and they make it a recommendation. My recommendation that we proceed with the planning board and vote deny. Is there a second? 
I will second Commissioner Brown's motion. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Halligus? No. <clears throat> Commissioner Brown? I vote yes to deny. Commissioner Rader? I vote yes to deny. Commissioner Street? No. Mayor Bernicki? Yes to deny. Motion passes three to two. Okay. Motion to deny passes three to two. With uh, the denial of the land use change, then there is no, uh, it is moot to consider a zoning change on this particular piece of property and we can move to 9A. We've got a uh, consent agenda, there's only one item. Your motion. I'll move the motion to approve. Second a motion, ma'am. Call the roll. Commissioner Halligus. Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Nicky? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. All right. Uh, item 10A. Uh, this is the consideration of approval of a budget amendment for the 21 22 fiscal year. Resolution number 2022046.1 for construction improvements of pump station 14 by Gulf Coast Utility Company in the amount of. One million five hundred forty thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, the utilities division is requesting this budget amendment um, for the accounting of task orders for the state revolving fund in the amount of one point five million. Uh, in the previous number I just mentioned, these were the construction improvements uh, at uh, pump station fourteen. Uh, city is planning on using advance payment for these tasks, and thus invoices will be presented to SRF for payment. Um, in advance of payment. So this is, uh, this is not voting on the construction contract, this is just the budget resolution. Uh, Your motion on 10A. You make a motion. I'll second. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Halligus? Yep. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Nevin? I'd like to read the amendment of, uh, to the budget a resolution number 20-220426.1, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21-22 budget to use the state revolving funds for construction improvements to lift station 14. Item 10B uh, is consideration of approval of the budget amendment for this fiscal year, uh, resolution number 2022046.2 for pump station 44 re rehabilitation design by Mott McDonald in the amount of $214,000. Uh, these funds are for the, the design of pump station 44 rehab um, and the work to be completed by the associated task order. Uh, again, this is an advanced payment uh, for SRF. Staff recommends approval. Your motion? State revolving funds, correct? That's yep. correct. I, I, I'd like to move, move approval, yes. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted resolution 2022-0426.2, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21-22 budget to use the state revolving funds for lift station 44 rehabilitation design. Item 10C, uh, consideration to approve budget amendment resolution 2022046.5 to utilize privately donated funds from David Costa Enterprises to expand the police department's community relations program in the amount of $1,000. Panama City Police Department was awarded this private donation in support of the department's dedication to serving the community. In alignment with that support, these funds will be utilized by our community relations team to include the pr purchase of promotional items such as children's badges, small footballs that are given away at venues such as public schools, cops and coffee, national night out, and other events to support the department's goals of giving back to the city of Panama City community. Staff recommends approval of the budget resolution. Motion. I'll make a motion. I'd like to think we don't need this, but hmm. unfortunately we do. Yes, I'll second that motion. Discussion. Call the roll. Commissioner Halligus. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Rader. Yes. Commissioner Street. Yes. Mayor Bernicki. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted resolution 2022 
a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21-22 budget for the acceptance of a donation from David Costa Enterprises to the police department to spend on community policing. Item 10D, consideration of approval for purchase of six sewage bypass pumps from Marshall Brothers Construction and Engineering in the amount of $175,000. In March of 21, the City of Panama City entered into an agreement with Marshall Brothers Construction and Engineering to lease six sewage bypass pumps, and at the end of one year, uh, to either purchase all six pumps for 175,000 or to continue the leasing them for a second year. The one-year lease term is up, and Public Works desire, desires to exercise the option to purchase these six pumps as it fulfills its current needs and is the most fiscally, fiscally responsible option for the city. Given the amount of uh, now procuring them as city assets, commission approval is required. The supporting fee schedule and information as well as the approval memo from March 21 is attached for review. Staff recommends approval. Motion on 10E. 10D, I'm sorry. I'll make a motion. I'll second the motion. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5-0. Item 10E, consideration of approval of Moffat Nickel for architectural and engineering services in the amount of $84,500 for change order number one for additional design work at the St. Andrews Marina bulkhead repairs and utilities replacement project. As background information, on November 9th, 2021, the City Commission approved the original <coughs> design award to Moffat Nickel for $456,960. It's a recommendation of our, uh, our PMO department and City Manager's office to approve this change order. Motion. I'll make a motion. No second. Discussion. Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Item 10F, consideration of approval for the renewal of city internet services with WOW in the total amount of $213,406.92. The city's IT division, in collaboration with purchasing in the city's attorney's office, reviewed proposals to provide the city with internet services. Only two internet providers were found to be capable of providing the services required to maintain the data infrastructure for the city. City staff made the decision to renew services with WOW at a yearly cost of $71,135.64. This will include an increase in the main internet line's capacity from one gig to three gig uh, to meet city expanding IT needs. Uh, both, quoted sorry, both quoted services were competitive in their pricing, however, because of time constraints, additional payroll costs, and the loss of existing public IP infrastructure, WOW was the most feasible and cost-effective. Staff recommends, the appro uh, uh, recommends approval for the three-year renewal of city internet services to WOW at a yearly cost of $71,135.64. Your motion? Second. I make the motion, Mayor. <laughs> Your second? second? Second. Any discussion? Call I, roll. I do want to add ahead. something to, uh, we can vote first and then I'll just add something. Right. <laughs> Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. So I have to commend um, Jared and uh, Manager McQueen. So we had, how many houses? Was it about six or seven? It was eight. Eight houses in the middle of the city that did not have internet access and they have never had internet access. Oh. They have been on satellite on Baker Court, and so working with WOW at WOW's expense. Uh, yeah, and I can go into that further if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, um, Jared, because it's a great thing. So I wasn't a part of these contract negotiations. My, my wife works for WOW. Um, I had been working with her on Baker Court for quite some time. Um, WOW picked up that bill to build that entire block uh, for high-speed data, noting that that was the only uh, area in the city that did not have broadband access. That's something I told them that our ARPA dollars could cover, um, and they decided to build that out on their own at their own expense, well north of a quarter million dollars. So, oh, uh, nice, yeah. amazing. Thank you. So, great work. Well, you, I'll introduce you to my wife, and you can thank her. What's the barber say? Right. Next. NG. Okay. Consideration of approval <laughs> of a renewal agreement for City Works in the amount of $122,400. City Works is an integral work order system used by multiple departments in the city. The renewal of City Works is an increase uh, price for the 2020 renewal from $98,000 to $122,000 this year. 
during the onboarding of CityWorks software, the city paid an initial cost for 100 licenses. The existing CityWorks user team was ex excluded from the billing for 2021, causing an increase in licensing from 100 to 200 users this year. There's also been a 5% increase on the licensing fees. This has resulted in a total of an increase of 24,400 for 2022. Staff recommends approval for the renewal of City Works at the new pricing level. Motion to approve the renewal. <clears throat> I'm, I'd like to move, move approval. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Item 10H, consideration of approval of professional services contract for urban planning and design with DPZ Co-Design, LLC, Goodwin Mills, Kwood LLC, and Dover Coal and Partners. As background, the City of Panama City, Florida, through the City's Purchasing Division, solicited qualifications from experienced and qualified planning and design firms to provide continu continuing professional services for urban planning and design. The scope was to seek professional services on a continuing basis to provide the city the ability to solicit qualifications for future projects directly from approved consultants. Hmm. All um, right, I'll move, I'll move approval for that. Okay. There's a second. I'll second. Sure. Any other discussion? Yes. Nothing's paid unless something's done. That's right. Yeah. Correct. Just yes. like engineering. It allows us to issue task orders on demand. Correct. Okay. Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, consideration of approval of community design block grant housing program policies and procedures manual and accompanying resolution number 2022046.4. Uh, Panama City is an entitlement community that receives a yearly allocation of CDBG funds from the uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development to carry out the city's CDBG program. Upon acceptance of each annual grant award, the city contractually agrees to implement the program in accordance with HUD Act of 1974 and the related CDBG program regulations um, as part of federal code. CDBG awards are also subject to uniform administrative standards for federal awards. Um, Panama City provides this manual as a resource for implementing CDBG program projects to ensure funds are used to develop viable urban communities by providing decent housing and a suitable living environment, principally for persons of low and moderate income. CDBG funds must be used for eligible activities that meet national objectives for the program. Uh, department head of rec uh, recommendation is to approve the CDBG mo manual. Um, staff recommends approval of this manual and authorize the city manager or, and or the CDBG department director to make non-substantial changes to the manuals, rules, and regulations are updated or amended. Your motion? Motion to approve, Mayor. Your second? Yeah, I'll second the motion. Discussion. I have a Roll. question. So this this one was kind of new knowledge. I talked with um, uh, Jared and Brandy about this on Monday. So does this mean that we will make changes to our policies or only just as the federal government requires us to make changes to those policies? So I'm going to ask Jan to jump in if, okay. and correct me right. if I'm wrong. Thank this you. is a this is a standard operating procedures manual. The item we talked about Monday was the CDBG action plan. Two separate so this documents. is not these are two separate. Correct. Two separate. OK. All right. Thank you. Yeah. The, any changes that we make would be in response to either one, either the okay. federal government changes in the federal government regulations, or if we find something that's substantially, that's non-substantial, uh, Scribner's error, for yeah. example, okay. we would change, we could go ahead and change it. All right, thank you. Call the roll. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Member Nicky? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Devin? The commission has adopted resolution 2022-0426.4, a resolution of the city commission of the city of Panama City declaring the community development block grant policies and procedures to be adopted. Okay. Thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, have a good rest of your week. <laughs>